Hugging faces quickly become the standard place that you host your AI models and the data to train those models. It's essentially just like GitHub, where you host all that data isn't from an open source perspective. They go a step further than GitHub though, and they allow you to run those applications and host those models directly uh, through easy push button click ability hosting uh, options. They make it really easy. You could click a button to host that model on an AWS server or an Azure server. They even have an easy option for serverless mode where you simply just pass in your API key and they will host the models themselves and then pass through probably running an Amazon servers. And then you you will pay Hugging Face uh, per API call. They also mention here on the website that they uh, have applications and they kind of do, but it's not really. You're probably more gonna go to GitHub for those applications, for the full stack application, because it's gonna have everything all in one. What they, I would say is okay with the application side of things is they allow you to host some of the boilerplate code that's required, usually in Python, in order to inference data. And they have a uniformed API with their transformers input model that automatically selects the correct embedding and the model and the correct uh, data transformation that's required to run your input, your user input, through the model and then get, so they've really gone all the way end to end to make it really easy for you to host any kind of model. Now, not just any kind of model, like uh, their large language models or natural language processing models where they determine how, is, is this super positive? Is it negative? Are there bad words? What is the sentiment? Is it classroom safe? Is there PII in here? What kind of a nouns or data extraction? There's just so many options that are available with AI. AI will basically do anything that you want it to do and all that's available on Hugging Face. Go to huggingface.co. Hugging Face is this repository, a place to go for all the AI model needs. And they have on their website, a trending section on the homepage that shows us all of the most recent trending AI models, probably based on download rates and things like that, and maybe favorites as well. But check this out. We've got a new large language model. Uh, Cohere for AI is a C4 AI command R plus is at the top of the list. And I like looking at this one because it says here that the model is too big for their serverless model, but you can launch it on their endpoints for dedicated, which means that you can pay for a dedicated always on GPU that's capable of running this massive 104 billion parameter model. And I can see why this is a popular one because it is a larger model, which is more expensive to train that has been open sourced and now you have full access to. Oh wow, and it's even got a really big context length, which is important. So when you're building uh, these uh, retrieval augmented generation applications, you're gonna pass in additional context into the input prompt. So that way you can give it additional data, most likely on data that's never seen before, data that's not been trained on which are usually internal documents to the business. You'll take that data and you will append it to the prompt and then you'll ask a question, usually asking it to sort of look through, read the document and determine what, maybe there's a question, an employee has a question about one of the products or a process within the business. So you can use it for the, the command R plus is optimized for a variety of use cases, including reasoning. So you can have it sort of walk through, sort of like trying to figure something out uh, you can have it summarize the data so it's easy for a human to consume it. And then you can also ask questions of the data that you pass into it. So this one is really big because what you're gonna be able to do is take this model, host it in-house. And since you're running it privately, you'll have full access to the system and you'll be able to leverage that internally for your business use cases which is really powerful because you would normally want to use something like uh, an Anthropic or an OpenAI or a Bedrock on Amazon, which are APIs that you have to hit third parties for that are external to your systems. And so you'll want to use something like this, which is a really big model and it will provide really powerful capabilities. Oh wait, it's got a weird license. Hold on. Oh wait, one second. What is this license? C, C, B, Y, and C. What is this? Ah, uh, Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial. Okay. So basically it says you can use it for whatever you want, except 
for any kind of place where you're gonna sell it for money. Anything that will be directly for monetary compensation. So it's actually probably perfectly fine for internal business processes, use cases, where you have it behind the scenes and it's workflow and it's just a tool and you'll be able to use it just fine there without any problem. However, if you build a product around this model and you sell it for money, like as an API or a business or a web app or a mobile app and it uses this model, you will be breaking the terms of the license. So beware. When you're trying to get to know someone, you want them to respond in a way that li they light up. They go, woo, woo, let me tell you about the thing. You want them to get excited, get their, their brain like go really bright and shiny. You want them to have a really positive, and get, one way to do that is to ask them about their favorite hobbies or activities that they enjoy the best, something that gets them excited. Now, guess what? That's one of eight questions that we asked an AI to uh, give us an answer and ideas on how to get someone excited about uh, about getting to know you, how to get to know someone, uh, what are they passionate about, some of their goals. Like these are actually pretty good everyday questions that you could ask even during sales. Now this is a sales tactic. You do want to essentially befriend the prospect. You want them to get familiar. And it is a traditional human aspect of, hey, how do I get to know you? Let's learn more. Okay, let's get comfortable about our conversation. And then we can jump in and then, and then we sort of have a cadence in moving forward. And if you're not familiar with Hugging Face, it is sort of like the GitHub for all things artificial intelligence and machine learning. Hugging Face even has an option to host the models directly on Hugging Face through their their workflow and they provide a serverless endpoint and dedicated endpoint for inferences at runtime you want to run the models they make it really easy they make it push button easy so you can ask a question write a python code to reverse a string so you can ask it to write an application i'll ask it to write the application and it should start typing in oh wait it did it <laughs> Here's a Python code that, re that reverses a string. It writes the function, it gets the input string, and then it reverses it using, that will reverse it? This must be a stepping operator, right? So you, when you're doing, um, this is known as slicing. So when you have these colons in here and these braces, this is called slicing, it could be done with arrays. And guess what a string is, like a sentence, it is an array of characters, so you can slice strings and arrays themselves in lists. So you can slice this up. I believe this might be a step function. I'm actually pretty curious. I want to try this out really quick. So let me type in a string here, hello world, and world. And then we say, we do a slice on a negative one. Is it gonna reverse it? And it did! <laughs> All right, so guess what? You can host this, your very own a 104 billion parameter. It's huge, it's massive. You'll need a pretty beefy machine to host something of this magnitude. It supports a lot of languages that are common in the world, the most common languages, and you can ask it to do things for you. You have your own AI assistant in your pocket that will do everything from writing code in a programming language of your choice to having it do regular, ex Explain gravity to a chicken. All right, let's see. Let's give that a shot. I like that as a demo. All right, it's typing it out here really quick. Probably it's cached is my guess. The earth gently pulls everything towards its center. That's why when you let go of something, it doesn't just float away. Gravity says, hey, come back down here. And that chicken is the basic idea of gravity. <laughs> okay, I can see why this is today the most popular current uh, language model that's available. It's open source. Not only is it super massive, but it does a really good job. You can easily uh, train the model to to fine tune it. Uh, you can also deploy it to endpoints dedicated on Hugging Face or Amazon SageMaker or uh, Azure Machine Learning. They also make it really easy to run locally or if you have the GPU, gi the ginormous GPU, you can copy paste this code right here using the transformers uh, pi uh, pipeline. Then you just say it's a text generation and the model is this, which is Cohere for AI, C for AI, Command R plus. You can also take more control by taking in the auto tokenizer and the auto ML for casual large language models. Language models. Generate your message here. Role is the user and the content says, hello, how are you? And that is the initial prompt. You tokenize the inputs, pass your tokenized input IDs. Here you pass your input to IDs into the model that generate using a few parameters and then you get the output data uh, from immediately from the model but it's all encoded right in tokens so you just decode that and then you print the text and so that's how you'd run it say if you had a big gpu at home or if you got a big gpu server you could run this model now yourself directly and have your own ai in a box say i wanted to run this super big 400 uh, 104 billion parameter model 
I have to create a dedicated endpoint. I can give it a name. I can say where I want it to run. I want to have GPUs. Now, it would be nice if it let me know which of these I needed. It looks like it auto-selected the really big one, which probably is what I need for this super big model, which is $16 an hour. It's a pretty expensive. Although I can have it automatically turn off, which is pretty cool after, un after it not being used. I can create a public endpoint and make it really easy or private and then give it some credentials and, and uh, security. Neat, I can auto scales wow oh, so this is pretty nice i like this because it allows me to run it on my own on my own hardware i guess I'm, oh well am i running it on my own hardware i definitely didn't give it my account so i guess we have a private mode i can give it an aws account and then i probably have to set up a couple of other things to make that work but i can have an auto scale and then i can create the input we're gonna do it we're gonna, oh, oh i clicked it up oh, 16 dollars an hour oh come on <laughs> wait all right well we don't have another option to run this model right now and it won't give us the bigger one so what we have to do instead is not use this model or there is a quantized version of it. Let's see if we can find the quantized version of this model, which just means they, they uh, remove some of the accuracy and the floating point numbers. Here we go. All right, here's the quantized model. We can run on a much smaller system at $3 an hour. That's a lot better. All right, now we're just waiting for the model to initialize, which essentially is just asking Amazon to bring up the server. The data's gonna be copied over, and then it has to load the model into the GPU memory this can take quite a while, uh, m many minutes. It can, it takes a long time for the model to, so, oh, it failed, oh, come on. So we tried launching it on another dedicated server with triple the amount of RAM that was required and it still couldn't work. It's got problems with GPU traceback. Seems like there's some sort of mismatch on config and versions and it is very unfortunate. I mean, it seems like if you're gonna have a button to click to launch a server and there's not much you can do beyond it that it should work, we are having some issues. It is pretty new, I suppose from that perspective, right? This is pretty new, it's brand new, came out a couple days ago. Essentially what would happen though is we would get an endpoint URL that we would be able to use, uh, either secured or unsecured, and then we can post our text prompt against that API endpoint and then get a response back with the output from the model. I've tried this before and it's definitely worked on some of the existing models, some models from Google, uh, some other models from Anthropic. Uh, there's there's some good models out there that do work and they support without any crashing and sort of things. And it's pretty powerful. They give you, one of the things I really like are the settings here. They give you the ability to, you know, upgrade the model, that's nice, but push button click ready. They give you the ability to scale down to zero, which is nice because you know, during the nighttime, you don't want to spend money on those dedicated GPUs that you're not using. There's a force to scale to zero button, which means, you know, you're going to stop using it. And then, you know, it'll probably scale back up once you try to trigger it again. Do know that it does take quite a while to spin up these models up because to, to bring in that amount of gigabytes of data into GPU memory from, you know, disk, it just takes multiple minutes. You can overall stop the endpoint, which essentially pauses the overall endpoint and you can bring it back up again if needed, and then delete it permanently. Let's deploy our own AI model on servers running on Amazon AWS. There's a really easy way to do it using Hugging Face. They provide APIs to launch your own dedicated, private hosted, or managed systems running on AWS or Azure or Google Cloud. There's this really nice button here that says deploy. You can click the, the serverless or dedicated option. You just click this button here, and then you essentially make an API call passing in your token header for security purposes. You input your query, uh, which is, you know, the command or the request, and then you get the output. That's it, it's really that simple. So I'll log into my PubNub account and click on functions. We'll select our test app here for Hugging Face, and then I'm gonna create a template. We just type in Hugging Face, well, just Hugging, and we'll get our Hugging Face model. I click this, and then I need to pass in my API key here. Simply visit Hugging Face forward slash settings forward slash tokens, and you can get your API key. So I'll click on use template. Then I will plug in my super secret hugging face value of my token. Don't look. <laughs> you can also click the show API token right there and just and just copy that directly from this these uh these blanked out settings here. Okay, I've got everything set. My API key is ready to go, and I'll click on create. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna give me an API endpoint that I could then leverage directly uh, through a public URL 
without exposing my API key, right? That's one of that's one of the reasons why we have to do this this step here is because we have an API key in Hugging Face that is essentially a private key. It's secret, and you don't want to just give that away to anyone. So you need to host an endpoint like PubNub Functions, which is globally distributed to uh, basically all of Amazon's availability zones, right? So all of Amazon's zones will be running this code, this JavaScript code, and it will be leveraging the inference API directly on our uh, serverless endpoint. You can also use a dedicated endpoint and just modify the API inference URL as needed. So all I have to do, I believe, is start this model and then I can test as soon as it's ready to go, as soon as it finishes deploying into all of Amazon's availability zones, I'll be able to leverage the model directly. Quick walk through the code is very simple. We import HTTP libraries and a vault library that can fetch our API key from Hugging Face in the vault running uh, secure, it's a secret store that is encrypted. And then uh, we uh, have our default function here with the request. We've got our message, which is text hello world. And that is the test payload. We can capture that text here with the message. And then we can start passing any, we take the model that we're interested in, say the Dilbert base uncased fine tuned SST English. We have a GP2 model, uh, GPT-2. And we also have Google's Gemma model here and a BERT large cased fine tuned model. So we can run all four of these models at the same time pretty easily. And that's what we're going to do here really quick. We're going to click, we're just going to scroll down here and click publish to test this payload, the text hello world. And that will run all those models. Then we get our output here. The sentiment is going to be positive at a score of 90, 99%. That's pretty positive. And then we have GPT-2 with their generated text with uh, the hello world. And then it just comes out with whatever is going to be the response to that. It seems like Sailor Bison is out on the big day. <laughs> okay. And then we have uh, Google Gemma's uh, answer here to hello world. And that's going to be welcome to the realm of possibilities. How can I be of service today? Google Gemma is actually kind of uh, a little bit better because it's helping you along the way. And then you can continue that conversation with the model to provide further conversation context. And that's it. That's, it's really simple. And so now I have a running globally distributed API that uh, is accessible pretty easily. And the good news is it's fully secure. I can also apply session tokens and grant tokens to each of the users so that way only certain users have permission to use the API. There's a lot of capabilities and options. Once you have your, your endpoint up and running, your functions endpoint up and running, you'll be able to leverage any business pattern and model that you're looking to achieve while keeping your API key for Hugging Face secure.